Yes, class. Am I audible to all of you? Abdul, yes, Khadija, Mariam, Khudeja, Shaista. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, see, class, in the last class, we had uh, completed dot product and cross product, right? Now, see, uh, vectors are completed. We are left with projectile motion from motion in two dimensions. Let's start with horizontal projection first. Uh, we'll start with angular projection first, then we'll do horizontal projection. In any ways, horizontal projection is much easier than angular. So let us discuss angular first in detail. Then you'll be able to figure it out much more easily. Now see what is meant by projectile motion. Some things that you have to remember. You will observe a motion of this kind. Velocity will be there. This angle would be made. This is the initial velocity. This is the initial velocity. So this becomes u cos theta and this becomes u sin theta like this. So this is the velocity along x-axis. This is the velocity along y-axis. Now, whatever things you have studied in motion in a straight line, separately you have studied everything. Now you will just combine it as in you will solve everything along x-axis. You will solve everything along y-axis and then finally add it. Now, this figure is not sufficient for you to identify angular projection. By just looking at this figure, you will not be able to identify whether it's angular projection or not, right? So, you have to have some proper conditions. Let me show you the conditions first. Hmm. Now, along x-axis, there shouldn't be any change in velocity. Fine, velocity along x-axis remains same. That is ux, this remains constant. If you are seeing no velocity along x, x is not changing, then it means it is fulfilling one of the criteria for the projectile motion to occur. Now, if there is no change in velocity, acceleration will become zero. Acceleration along x-axis will become zero because acceleration comes into the system when velocity changes. If there isn't any velocity changes along, this is all about x-axis, just x-axis. And if acceleration is zero, force will also be zero. So ux, which became constant, led to acceleration as zero, which further led to force as zero. Talking about y-axis, what are the conditions along y-axis? See, along y-axis, one force, the one acceleration keeps on occurring. That is acceleration due to gravity. That isn't zero. And force is also there because acceleration is present. Force along y-axis exists. Now, one thing, velocity at the highest point, same thing the way we take in motion under gravity, velocity at highest point is zero. Now, we'll be doing each and everything. That is the questions, the derivations for range of motion and time period and everything. But uh, do one thing, note down this before it, then we'll start with the derivations. Make the heading angular projection, projectile motion or motion in two dimensions, and then start from. Write the conditions, and after this, I'll start with first the um, time, times uh, derivation. I'll start.
see now first we are going to derive the equation of trajectory now what is meant by trajectory trajectory is basically the path that is covered suppose a ball has been thrown like this Suppose a ball has been thrown like this. So this portion, no class, this part. See this, there is some part that is being getting subtended here also. And there is some part which is present also. This part, this entire thing which I am able to trace, this is known as the trajectory. Whatever is this path covered, that is known as the trajectory. So, equation of trajectory we have to define. Now, again, as I've told you, x-axis and y-axis have to be dealt separately. Acceleration along x-axis, this is zero. Acceleration along x-axis is zero. Why? Because this is one of the conditions of projectile motion. Remember, right now, you people just have written. You people have just written it that the condition is that acceleration along x-axis will be zero. So acceleration is zero. So among this equation, x is equal to ut plus half axt square. This term becomes zero. Fine. And ux, this becomes equal to u cos theta. I've told you this will also be fixed. So what is time from here? So x is equal to uxt. Time will be x by ux. So time is x by u cos theta. One equation we have from x-axis. Coming to y-axis, what all conditions do we have from y-axis? Uy is u sine theta. Acceleration is acceleration due to gravity. See, u sine theta is acting upwards. Acceleration due to gravity will act downwards. So what we have to do? We have to again choose here a sine convention. Let me take this as positive, this as negative. So this becomes minus. Y is equal to U by T plus half A by T square. Now what all things we have? This is U sine theta T minus G by 2 T square, right? Now see class, value of this time, can we take the value of t from this equation? t is equal to x by u cos theta. Can we put it in here? So y is equal to u sine theta. What is t? x by u cos theta minus g by 2. t is x square by u square cos square theta. Class u, u will get cancelled. Final equation x tan theta sin theta by cos theta minus g x square by 2 u square cos square theta. This is the entire equation. And what is u? See what are all terms that are mentioned over here. One thing, theta is what? Theta is the angle of projection. Theta is angle of projection. Fine. And u is what? U is initial velocity. or projectile velocity. Fine, so this is the entire derivation also and this formula you people have to remember. It's a lengthy formula. So please practice it, otherwise you'll, be, you'll not be able to remember it. Okay, start writing down from here.
Now see what is meant by time of flight. Suppose the body object was kept here initially, fine, at the origin, at t is equal to zero. I have st I've started the timer. All right, the body is moving, it is moving, it is moving. It, it reached here, then it started moving, coming down, down, down. And back, let's say, the body came at this point. And when I saw the timer, some t seconds had elapsed and I stopped it. So this entire duration that has been taken by the object from its projectile to its landing is known as the time of flight. Derivation is very easy. Formula is also very easy. Once you understand this part, uh, horizontal projection becomes much more easier. So time of flight is the time taken by the projectile to move from origin to the point where motion is stopped. See, y is equal to ut plus half a y t square, right? Now, displacement along y axis. Can you see any displacement along y axis? Though along x axis, something has been covered here. But along y axis, initially it was zero. Finally, also it is zero. So there isn't any displacement covered along y axis. So you can say y is zero because No displacement has occurred along y axis. All right. And what is uy? This I have already told you. Uy and ux will remain fixed. That is u sine theta. Acceleration along y axis. This is minus g. Because again, we have to abide by the sign conventions, right? So let us put everything. This becomes equal to u sine theta minus g. No, u sine theta t minus gt square by 2. So u sine theta t is equal to gt square by 2. So t, t will be cancelled. So from here, you have the time period is equal to 2 u sine theta divided by t. This is the formula of time. All right, this is the formula of time. period. Now see, when the body is moving upwards, when the body is moving up, this we call as the time of ascent. And when the body starts moving down, we call it time of descent. Remember, we did time of ascent, time of descent in... Um, Motion under gravity also. So time of ascent when the body moves up. Time of descent when the body comes down. Fine. Note it down for it. Then we will see for range of motion. So time of flight is what? The time taken by the projectile to move from origin to the point where motion is stopped. This is the definition. Note it down.
Now, next quantity that is range of motion. See, range of motion is basically the horizontal distance that is covered. You can say displacement along x axis. This is the initial point. The body landed here. This is the final point. So, this separation between the initial and final point is known as the range. This is actually the displacement. This is the path covered. The distance is trajectory and the displacement is range. So we have to actually find in time capital T how much horizontal distance has been covered. We know how much trajectory has been covered. We have the entire equation for that. But for uh, range, we do not have. Suppose we have, uh, okay, let's break it down into again x-axis and y-axis. So along x-axis, we have ut plus half at square. So acceleration is x. Uh, see, along x-axis, we do not have any value of acceleration. So this term becomes C. And here the displacement is equal to range of motion. What is ux? ux is u cos theta. Now time. Time we have already got our equation 2u sine theta by g. So ux into t. Correct? Why? C. ux is u cos theta. Acceleration along x-axis is 0. And time is 2u sine theta divided by g. Now, class, if uh, I rearrange it like this, r is equal to u square 2 sine theta cos theta divided by g. Can any one of you tell me what is 2 sine theta cos theta? Any idea? Anyone? Sine 2 theta. Sine 2 theta. Very good, Shaista. Very good. This is sine 2 theta. Yes. So you can use this equation also, but preferably which equation you should prefer? Equation u square sine 2 theta divided by z. This is the equation for range of motion. And if we have to, and if we want the maximum range that is possible, See, class, for maximum range, the angle has to be minimum 1 because we know it's sine theta and sines can be minus 1 also. They can be 0 also. So what is the highest value that is possible? It's 1. So for the maximum value, we should have sine 2 theta as 1. Right? So for having sine 2 theta equal to 1, it means something this is equal to 90 degree. We know sine 90 degree is equal to 1. So 2 theta is equal to 90 degree. What is theta? Two theta is equal to 90 degree. So what is theta? Theta is 45 degrees. So that is r becomes u square by g. This is the maximum value of range of motion. One more thing, if we have complementary angle, can anyone tell me the concept of complementary angle? Yes, class, complementary angles. In class 10th, you people have studied complementary angles. When two angles combine, they make 90 degrees? Yes, Shaista. When two angles combine, they make 90 degrees. Very good. When two angles combine and make 90 degrees, it means the sum of two angles is 90 degrees. So suppose there are two ranges. Two ranges of motions are present. One 30 degrees, 60 degrees. See, 30 plus 60 is 90. 45 plus 45 is 90. 89 degree and 1 degree also, this is known as complementary angle. All right. So these, the sets of angle that actually define 70 degree and 20 degree, you can take that actually make up 90 degree in total. So suppose we have complementary angles, right? One is R theta, that is U square sine 2 theta by G. And one is complementary. If both are complementary, it means theta plus this angle will be 90 degree. That's what is meant by complementary. So what is x? 90 minus theta. So r 90 minus theta will be u square sine 
to theta. So that is 90 minus theta by G. This is u square sine multiply 2 into 180 degree, uh, 2 into 90 is 180 de degree and 2 into theta. This is minus 2 theta divided by. Now sine 180 minus 2 theta. This is equal to again sine 2 theta. This is also equal to sine 2 theta. So what is R90 minus theta? U square sine 2 theta by G. Can you see any difference from theta of and 90 minus theta? See what is what happened here? It's just that, see, one body was there which had the motion like this. This was theta. And second one was there that had, let, let's not take it theta, let's take some uh, proper example. Let's say this is 30 degrees. So if it is 60 degree, it means that it is complementary. So however high it will reach, the displacement, this range that is covered, this is going to be the same. Let's say this is 60 degree. So R theta is equal to R 90 minus theta actually. So Though height difference may be there, time of flight difference, any some other difference might be there. But range of motion means from the initial point to final point, this displacement is covered as C. Note it down, then height uh, we will cover. First note down range.
Uh, yes, class. Now the maximum height. See, maximum height means this is one height. Suppose the point ball is here. This is one more height. Again, the ball has reached here. So this is one more height. The ball has reached the highest point. This is one more height. The ball has reached here. So this is one more height like this. Now, among these values of height, the highest value, this is known as the maximum height. So maximum height is the maximum value of highest point that is reached by the person. So we'll use the equation V square minus U square is equal to 2AS. This is for y-axis, displacement along y-axis. All right. V square minus U square. Now see, uh, velocity at the highest point will be zero, right? Y zero because this is at the highest point. All right. Now u y, what is u y? u y is u sine theta. Acceleration we have discussed, this is minus g. And s y, uh, this is the displacement, that is the height h. So when we combine this, this becomes uh, 0 minus u square sine square theta. 2, this becomes minus g into h. So this is u square sine square theta is equal to 2 g h. Because see, this minus sign will cancel this minus sign. So what is the value of height that is coming? See, h is equal to u square sine square theta divided by 2g. So this is the total. u is the initial velocity. Theta is the angle of projection. g is the acceleration due to gravity. All right. Now, when we have to find out the maximum value, again, sine theta will be 1. So sine square theta will also be 1. So theta will be 90 degrees. Right? So at 90 degree, we'll get the maximum value of height. And at 45 degree, we'll get the maximum value of range. Please remember this class. All right. Uh, velocity is left to discuss. Uh, discuss. Um, note down height, then we'll discuss velocity quickly. Note it down. Last component that is left is velocity. Then we have the question, angular projection will be over.
Yes, class. The last component will also. So, what all components we have discussed till now? First one was trajectory. That derivation can come. Time instant we have seen total time taken by the projectile to land up. Range of motion, the horizontal displacement cover. Then fourth one we had seen the vertical component that was the height, maximum height. Lastly, we will see velocity at any point. Initial we know u, u cos theta, u sin theta for u x for u y. But at any instant, if we want to find out, we'll use our normal equation. This it's just that acceleration will always be zero. So we'll in any case be x. I have told you know velocity along x axis doesn't change. So this will be u cos theta. All right. And what about y velocity, y component? Where when we use the equation v y is equal to u y plus a t. V, uh, v y will be u sine theta minus g t. This is the equation that you have to use. So what will be the total velocity? How do you use when two velocity? See, v x and v y are perpendicular. Recall your parallelogram law. How do we write it? V x square plus v y square. And what is tan beta? Vy divided by Vx. Fine? Because both of the Vx is perpendicular to Vy. This is the reason. This, these are all your formulas that will be used. Quickly noted down. Velocity at any instant. Till here, is it clear to all of you? If this is clear, entire projectile motion is now at your tips. Is it clear? Shaista, yes, Mariam? Yes. Abdul? Yes, ma'am. Khadija and Khudeja, clear to both of you? Yes, Khadija. Is it clear? Are you present in the class? What about you, Khudeja? Yes, ma'am. Okay, both are present. Fine. Noted down. See, this part is over. It means your entire projectile motion is over. Now, I just need one more class in projectile motion to complete with the horizontal projection. And that is very easy because this angle part will also be deleted there. So, only half of things will be present. 